welcome to Natural Language Line. This is the University of Dosto, this is the Innovation Center, I'm Miguel Teiria. I'm here to teach you the Natural Language Learning System. You probably think learning languages takes a long time, that's a slow process, and that uh, you have to start learning as a child, and a bunch of other limited beliefs. That's all not true. You can learn a language fast if you do all the right things, which uh, the complete opposite of the, what they will teach you in a language school. So if you want to learn a language really quickly, you came to the right place. Let's get going. Learning a foreign language is a relatively straightforward process. It's not that complicated. You need to learn three things. You need to learn enough words, the meaning of those words. You need to learn what those words sound like. Uh, so that you understand them and you can be understood when you say them, and this is important. And then you need to keep practicing until you're good at speaking. And that's all. You don't need to learn complex grammar rules, uh, lists of uh, advanced uh, whatever. No, that's the only thing you need to do. So, basically, we need. Uh, words Many of the words What they sound like And I could use terms like vocabulary and pronunciation and so on But I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible for all of those who are not uh, experts in languages And uh, so words, what they sound like And then Speaking practice. Now, how do we learn as many words as possible, what they sound like, and get speaking practice? Well, you say, well, we will, we can study a list of vocabulary and uh, learn five words a day or something like that. But it'll take you years to learn enough words to understand the language world if you learn five or ten words a day, like some people do. Let, don't do that. Let's, let's do it much easier, much more enjoyable. So, the way we can do this is by developing habits, right habits. So, uh, in order to learn vocabulary and grammar, which is not that different from vocabulary, it's just learning the meaning of other words, right? Uh, it's basically input is all you need. So, you should develop the right habits, and this should include First reading, then listening, then speaking, and a fourth one could be translating, if you want to get really, really good. If you get rid of all of your, most or all of your mistakes, you should add this one as well. But we'll get there later. If you want to get, if you want to get fluent fast and you want to understand the language well and speak it well, this three are what you should focus on. So you should de develop the habit of doing all these three daily. How? Well, this one is very easy. The only thing you need to do is find a podcast in the language that you learn. Uh, find some time. Could be while doing something at home. Could be like cooking or cleaning or doing some like or can go shopping while listening to something you can work out while listening to something commuting driving going for walks going for runs and so on you can if you get creative with it you can find time to listen to the language that you're learning two three hours a day easy and that's a lot of extra practice if you don't do anything else it's likely that it will all sound like noise to you. But if you do the rest of the exercises and you keep listening to the language consistently for an hour, two hours, three hours a day, in a few weeks you'll understand a lot. Yeah, but you need to do all of them. You shouldn't skip any of them because, uh, yeah, well, this one I don't really like it. No, for this to work, you need to do everything. You can do it casually, half an hour of actual 
practice time plus half an hour of listening a day could do an hour and an hour that 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 would be significantly faster or you could do three hours of practice time and three four hours of listening time if you want to improve really really fast i've had clients who've done eight hours a day of uh, spanish time and they've improved a lot in a month so it, oh, it really depends on how fast you want to improve but you should be as consistent as possible and try to do it every single day each one of them so like i was saying listening find the podcast that you like uh, you can simply go to spotify you type spanish if you uh, learn spanish for example or the podcast find, find a bunch of them uh, choose one that you like and you listen to it over and over again and you should probably listen to the same episode twice so you understand way more the second time anyway that's already enough about listening let's talk about this one uh, the single best way to learn vocabulary and grammar is in context and you can start by reading simple texts uh, first in your language and then in uh, excuse me first in the language that you learn then in your language to understand the context uh, the meaning and then again in the language that you learn yeah so let's say you learn spanish you get a bilingual text which we offer here and we've got a lot of them in natural language learning you have it in spanish you have it in english you read the spanish part try to understand what it means try to figure it out you then read the english part you uh, learn what it means and then you read the spanish part again now knowing what it means and you read a lot this time and you should record yourself i know a lot of people don't feel comfortable with that but trust me this is going to be a game changer you record yourself reading aloud five minutes ten minutes a day and then you listen to it every day together with the listening practice that you're doing so you listen to native voices so if you want to sound mexican you should read aloud in spanish every day and listen to it right before or right after native mexican podcasts or youtube videos or whatever you're listening to so you will start the difference will be very obvious in the beginning but if you keep doing it like that you'll start fixing your accent and sounding more and more like them because you'll notice where all your mistakes are mistakes or like the, where your accent differs from the original um, that's for reading uh, for speaking there are different things you can do uh, we've got a lot of different speaking exercises but to start with Reading aloud is uh, enough. If you read aloud every day, you develop muscle memory and you get faster and faster at thinking and speaking in the language. But the second other main exercise that we use is questions and answers. You get a list of questions, you try to answer them in speaking. You have your own answers already in text, so you first you can practice reading the answers aloud but then, once you get enough practice and you're comfortable with that, you get the questions without the answers of a different topic, so your work or your hobbies or whatever, and you try to answer those questions on your own in speaking, speaking aloud. Uh, that will allow you to get as much practice as you want in the language that you're learning without needing a partner. And that's it. That's all you need. We'll, we'll get into this later, but for now, let's focus on these three. Thank you, let's, let's get going with this. Okay, let's start with reading for vocabulary and grammar. Uh, you probably heard of the 80-20 rule, which means 80% of your results come from 20% of your effort, and that applies to basically everything. So, uh, in language learning, we can use this rule to figure out what what's the 80 percent uh what, what's the 20 percent of the language that will get us the results we want so if we focus on the most important parts you will be we'll be able to understand and speak most of the language very quickly if we master the 80 percent most important vocabulary and grammar and again uh, don't even think of grammar grammar is just words 
Uh, it's just words that look slightly different. So don't, don't worry too much about that. If you keep seeing it in context, you end up learning what it means. And that's the big secret here, really. So, again, you get a text in Spanish, let's say you just learn Spanish, or Portuguese, or German, or we've got different courses here. You get, uh, it's translation in English. You read it first in the language you're learning. You try to figure out what it means. You check the translation if, uh, to see if you are right, if you knew what it meant, or if you didn't know anything, then now you get to know what it meant. And then you read it again, now knowing what it meant, so it all makes sense to you. And you read it aloud, and you recall yourself. That's for the speaking uh, practice for later. But this will allow you, if you keep doing this, this will allow you to learn a lot of words very quickly. And if they're the right words, so the thing is, if um, the scripts we're using, because we use scripts, conversation scripts, and we talk about all the usual stuff people normally talk about. Your job, your uh, family, hobbies, things you, the things you normally talk about. If we get good at speaking about those, first you learn all the vocabulary, so you can do it at understanding, and then you get good at speaking about those, you can have a lot of conversations very quickly. Yeah? So that's the idea. For reading, we should do reading in the language, try to figure out, read, in the, read the translation, now know what it means, then read again, this time aloud. And you keep repeating this process. This combined with uh, listening will help you learn hundreds of words in a few days if you are super consistent with this. I can't emphasize how enough how important this is. So, consistency, reading and listening every single day. You do these two things and you'll improve, your comprehension will improve very quickly and your speaking will follow. Yeah, so let's start reading. Let's talk about translations and translating as a tool for language learning. This is not something I invented. This is something people have been doing since, I think, the Middle Ages, the Romans, the Greeks, and so on. Because it's really effective and it's the easiest way to learn to write well in a foreign language. And it's very simple as well. So basically, all you need is a bilingual text. And I'm giving you a lot of those in the courses. You get hundreds of bilingual texts there. About different topics. Plus, you can create your own, your, your own, your own, but in context, um, with the language highlights, like I explained earlier. So, uh, basically, you get a text in the language that you're learning. Let's say you learn Portuguese. You have Portuguese here, right? English, and you get sentences and you also get sentences here. Same sentences. So hi, how are you doing? And you, you go in Portuguese, you go in, in English. And you've been reading, then figuring out what it means, reading it aloud, and so on and so forth, and listening to it. Now if you want to get really good at this, you cover this. In fact, I give you only the English version, so you can do this exercise. This is a blank slate, later on in the course. Um, and so basically, without looking at this, you can do it with your own text that you find and you create, but I, I give you a lot of those already, pre-made uh, translation exercise texts. So without looking at this, you translate this into into Portuguese, yeah. So how are you doing? How are you doing? And hola, blah blah blah. Uh, you write all the sentences. Yeah, I'm going to work. And write it in Portuguese. And once you're done, you look at the original. Think. So let's say you write the translation here. You write the translation here. Uh, 
So you look at the original, you look at the translation, and you fix all the mistakes. Use red. You fix all the mistakes you made. And you go on to the next uh, text. It's a slow and tiring exercise, but I promise you, if you do this daily, you get really, really good at vocabulary. You, because it allows you to, to see which words you know and which ones, which ones you don't know. Because this is not like having a conversation, and that you can just mumble and no. If you don't know a word, you you won't be able to write that word. So you you have a blank there in the text. Or if you're making a lot of mistakes, uh, grammar's wrong, or you spelling's wrong, whatever, immediately notice it and you fix it yourself. And then you maybe in a week or two go back to the same text. But I recommend you doing different texts on a daily basis. Again, it's boring, it's tiring, it's long, it takes time. This is only if you want to get really, really good. Like C1, C2 level, you do this all the time for three months, you get really good. If you only want to speak, have conversations, understand, and even if you make mistakes, make yourself understood, this is not necessary. But if you want to get really high level, really important. Yeah? So basically, this is all you need to do uh, to get good at drama and writing. You translate into the language and then you correct yourself and you keep trying. This is all you need to learn grammar again. Okay, and finally, let's talk about speaking. Uh, in order to speak a language well, you need to speak it a lot. No matter how much studying you do and how many grammar rules and how many exams you pass and so on. I know people who have passed a C1 exam in, in English, Spanish people, who can't speak at all. It's embarrassing. So, anyway, I'm, I'm not going to go on a rant here. In order to speak well, you need to practice speaking. And you're going to tell me, yeah, I don't have anyone to speak with. You can find someone, you can go to italki, for example, and find someone to speak to, but you can do it by yourself really efficiently. And once you get, my recommendation is that you do all these techniques, and once you are comfortable enough and you're able to speak a lot on your own, then you start speaking to people. It's always going to be much, uh, it's always going to be rewarding to talk to people once you're able to say a lot of things. Because they'll be like, oh, you speak Russian, and that's nice. And, and then you'll be like, yeah. But if you start talking to them when you can't even say your name, then it's going to be embarrassing, it's going to be uncomfortable, it's just, it's going to be a mess and it's going to uh, make you lose motivation and you don't want that. So what uh, I suggest is you try all these exercises, you do them regularly. After or while you also do the reading and listening to learn all the vocabulary and improve your comprehension. And once you can speak on your own a lot, then you start with people. Yeah? So, yeah, let's go. This is a short list, actually, I think I forgot one. So, yeah, I forgot one. First one, reading aloud. Super easy. Take the text, try to read aloud, and for maximum effect, like I said, you record yourself. You can send it to a native speaker. That's good. If you want them to give some feedback, you should probably do that. But also, record it and listen to it together with native speaker material. Yeah? Podcast, native speaker speaking, you hear yourself talk, you start noticing the differences. But you should read it out all the time. You build muscle memory, you get used to speaking faster and faster in the language. Second one, language islands. Like I said, you prepare language islands. You read them a lot daily, you drill them, you should get really good at saying those things, all those sentences that are the most relevant, the most important sentences for you. 
memorize them. So whenever you're in conversation, and if you're running out of things to say, having a couple of groups of sentences that you can just... Uh, have you ever talked about my, my native uh, language and you start talking about it? Uh, like, I mean, don't make it so artificial and natural, but you can always try to direct the conversation where you're strongest. And if the more language items you prepare, the more areas you'll have, the more strong points you'll have, so you can always jump to one of the one of the islands and keep the conversation flowing, right? Then this is for pronunciation. Take a list of sentences uh, with audio and you listen to a sentence, you repeat after, you listen to it again, you repeat after and try to sound as close as possible to native speakers. You can do this with, uh, there's lots of content out there you can use for this. There's, there are really good materials like Asimil, Glossica, uh, uh, li uh, Link as well, the stuff you'll find in Natural Language Learning as well, and also YouTube. YouTube is free and you can find anything. In fact, your favorite scenes from films, from series, are perfect for this. So. If you want to improve your German accent, go watch some German films uh, and you end up sounding like uh, one of those actors. Like, you know, listen to all of Till Schweiger's uh, lines and you repeat after them in each one of his films. And you, know, so you end up sounding like him, for example. Don't use Till Schweiger as a as, uh, as someone you emulate in German. Or do, I mean, uh, what do I care? Questions and answers. You get lots of those here in uh, natural language learning. Long list of questions on any topic. Uh, you try to answer them in speaking. It's as simple as that. So what hobbies do you have? Uh, I like skiing, I like Horse riding, I like whatever, and you, you speak as, as much as you can in each one of them. Yeah, what do you do for a living? And you try to talk about your job. I mean, it should be spontaneous, as if you were talking to people, but you do it in front of a paper or your screen. But you try to do it as if you were in conversation. Yeah, this is really sounds stupid. Maybe your neighbors are gonna are going to think you're crazy. But if you speak to yourself with this questions and answers, uh, answers exercise, you'll improve a lot very quickly. You should combine them, by the way. You sh this is the easiest one. This is also the easy. This is basically the same exercise, but with your own sentences. You should do this a lot in the beginning. This later when you're starting to be able to say things and you want to improve the way you say them. This when you want to get better at like thinking fast and, and speaking fast and responding, quick response. Then, this is the translation exercise that we talked about in writing. It's just the same thing in, in uh, speaking form. So you take the text in, we used Portuguese as an example earlier, I think. We use the text in, in German, the text in English, you hide the text in German, look at the text in English, uh, and you go sentence by sentence, you read the English part and you try to say it in German. Look it up. If you got it right, perfect. If you got it wrong, you read it aloud from the German. Second sentence, you same thing. You, you read the English, you try to say it in German, check if you said it correctly. If you didn't, you, say, you read it aloud. Keep doing that. Simple. And the last one is the presentation. This one is advanced. It's the most advanced of the techniques. It should only be done uh, when you're already at a relatively high level. And, and it's also simple. You just choose a topic, put a timer on, a topic that's probably interesting and relevant, interesting and or relevant or necessary. Um, 
uh, set a timer and go in front of the mirror and just speak in front of the mirror until the timer goes off. Yeah? You keep talking, no matter what. That's the presentation technique. That's really good for when you have to... I mean, you can do it with real presentations. If you, wanna, if you have to do public speaking, it's basically public speaking training, but in the language that you learn. So, basically, this... If you do all these things, uh, let's... If you do this, first three, for a month, daily, then you do this two for a month, daily again, and then for the last one you do this, daily, I mean, and you should probably, in the second one you should do this too, but also keep doing this, and then the, in the last one you should do this, but also keep doing this regularly, because they are all complementary, right? Uh, you should work on your accent, but you also on your fluidity and the ability to think and speak fast with this one, and uh, this also is muscle memory, and you get used to say more complex sentences that you read. You you always going to use more complex sentences reading aloud than when you're creating your own sentences when you're thinking of your own sentences. That's normal. So they're all complementary. So you should do all of them. But in three months, if you start with this three, then add these two, and then finally at the last one, you can get really good at speaking. It's just it's effort. It's effort, you need discipline, and you need hard work. But if you do this daily, you'll get really good at any language in three months. And uh, I think that's all. Thanks for watching. And if you want to uh, start applying all this, I mean, you can take the techniques, go do it on your own. But I highly recommend buying one of the courses and you'll use these techniques. I've got everything ready and you'll get fluent in three months. Six, if you're lazy. But you, as long as you're co relatively consistent, you'll get good really quickly. Thanks for watching.